We have first political president Manyara Irene Muyenziwa join us on the news. Thank you very much for joining us. How do you explain the low uptake into a political leadership positions? Um, I think what you're finding is um, the issue is, um, is, is, is um, something that is entrenched uh, when it comes to uh, the issue of patriarchy uh, in the whole region of Africa, not just uh, Zimbabwe. So with this uh, particular issue, you find that it's very difficult, you know, for African countries, um, not just Zimbabwe, to actually um, accept, you know, women uh, in um, uh, in leadership uh, positions. Um, without, um, I think, looking at this issue of patriarchy, I don't think you will ever see a shift uh, in terms of um, accepting women in these very high positions. Um, that is the root cause. Uh, no matter, you know, whatever, you know, SDG goals that have been put out there in terms of uh, looking at the percentage of women uh, um, are taking up, you know, higher positions, uh, especially in politics, uh, you find that um, that entrenched, you know, problem of patriarchy will never, never allow any women participation uh, in regards to uh, our politics. But that does not reflect um, so, democracy. That does not reflect the uh, movement when it comes to uh, gender equality and other issues. Um, I guess the question now should be, what can be done to begin to maybe reverse this kind of patriarchy that you talk about? Is it the role of the government or maybe some other bodies to encourage an increased uptake in women participation? Yes, yeah, if you look at, uh, I think, some initiatives that have been put in place, you know, like the National Gender Policy uh, that was put in place in 2004, um, it actually reflects, you know, the issues pertaining to, I think, women as a whole, not just looking at um, the, uh, just politics, you're looking at, uh, you know, all sections across um, um, uh, uh, employment, you know, you're looking at um, issues uh, like the legislative um, uh, roles, you're looking at, uh, you know, directorship, you know, leaderships uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, running businesses. Uh, you're looking at issues like, you know, running um, uh, the, 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 the legislative, you know, nature itself. Uh, so with this, you know, you're finding that, you know, women in politics and decision making is never a thing because you're looking at perhaps you know, 0.08% uh, of women, you know, uh, involved, you know, in politics. You've got the issue of, um, uh, the issue of um, what I call is uh, intimidation. Uh, as, as a woman, you know, you're not allowed to speak, uh, mainly in African countries. It's not just Zimbabwe. This problem is all across Africa. It's just not, you know, affecting uh, Zimbabwe. But when these initiatives are put in place, you know, like the national gender policy, uh, you find that, you know, there isn't a follow through. There is acknowledgement of the issue. You know, uh, there is acknowledgement of, uh, you know, upholding the SDG goals. Um, like, I think, for instance, you know, the 2005, you know, Beijing plus, you know, global review. Um, it so many recommendations you know, that needed to be, um, you know, followed through. But uh, what you find is just um, uh, a formal take to it that, you know, we are seen as, uh, you know, upholding, you know, these initiatives. But the follow through to actually implement and, uh, you know, be pragmatic, you know, about it is not seen all across, you know, Africa. So it is a concern, you know, that um, the whole region of Africa, if you're looking at the, uh, the 2008, you know, SADA protocol on gender and development, uh, you're finding that, you know, there are 20 substantive, you know, targets that are within there for achieving gender quality. But look at any one of them. Has any one of them ever been achieved? Well, I mean, still, still talking, still talking about what can be done. What can women do? Maybe I mean, we make up a, a huge percentage of the voting population. So, how do you think this will reflect in the 2023 general elections? And what can women do to begin to uh, push for the kind of change and participation that they deserve? I think a strong voice uh, is needed. I think a follow-through of these initiatives. It's something that needs a proper follow-through. 
if it means by way of protesting, if it means by way of petition, if it means by any other way that you can put out there, you know, for the government to actually understand that, you know, there is a voice, you know, for women. We need to be heard. Like the, the initiatives, you know, like the broad-based, you know, women's economic empowerment framework is some sort of mechanisms, you know, that can be put out there that us as women, we can use as a follow through uh, to voice out these concerns, you know, to the government uh, that um, we need to be heard. Like I said, you know, we've got the same knowledge, the same te technological uh, uphold in terms of these positions, probably even better, you know, in knowing um, that, uh, you know, the, our country, you know, is, can only be, the change can only be achieved, you know, by way of voting. Like I said before that, you know, the vote turnout for women or the vote cast for women is roughly about 75-80% as compared to, to men. So you can see that, you know, there is a voice within, you know, that is actually being shown through this vote cast. But um, that needs to be realized by the government because obviously if women don't turn up, you know, for voting, then we don't have this change, you know, that we want to see. But then the issues of rigging of vote is an issue for Zimbabwe. So actually the voice of women through this vote cast is not actually seen, you know, on the vicinity because of so many issues, you know, these underlying issues of rigging yeah. voting and so things like so, that. So much, so much to really uh, focus on, to look at if we have to increase women participation and promote democracy mm. um, or have to continue this conversation another time. Thank you very much for joining us on News. Oh, you're welcome. Take care. Thank you.